Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, also, we'll start by thanking the um, organizers for putting together this um, great meeting um, and for inviting me to present here. Um, it's also the first real kind of conference feeling that I have here in, in these virtual things. Um, and uh, yeah, um, um, I will continue with uh, also two disclaimers. The first disclaimer is that um, um, Opposite to some of the previous speakers who, um, who were theoreticians and uh, presenting theoretical work, I will here now present a work which is a shared work between the theory group of um, Wolfgang Belzig. Um, and basically work has been done by his PhD student, uh, Peter Machon, and the experimental work um, from my group, Simon Diesch was the person in charge doing it. Um, and um, there's also the Karlsruhe group involved um, in uh, basically in, in sample preparation. So if you um, have questions about the theory, then later, please ask Wolfgang and if what's about the experiment, uh, I will be the person. Now comes the second disclaimer, and the second disclaimer is, um, the title is um, Probing Triplet Superconductivity by Scanning Tunneling Spectroscopy, and I hope those of you uh, who are doing and are used to UHV uh, scanning tunneling spectroscopy with all these nice um, atomic resolution would not be disappointed. You will see later that it is a kind of a special um, um, STM, and so I probably, I should not have put scanning here. Okay. Um, yeah, so let's start with a, with a, um, a real content. Um, thanks to Tero for giving this nice introduction into the field. And I think in this uh, audience uh, in particular, also after Tero's talk, I can be very brief on that. Um, nevertheless, I start with a very short introduction into the proximity effect with ferromagnets, um, also to introduce um, the, the notation. Um, so we all know in BCS superconductors, we usually have singlet uh, Cooper pairs. Um, and uh, as was mentioned already by, by Tero, um, these, um, um, the um, electrons forming the Cooper pairs also have to fulfill Pauli's principle, and this sets some constraints on the symmetry of the spin function uh, and the orbital relation um, and, uh, and the, the, the frequency symmetry, as will come in a, in a minute. If we do proximity effects uh, between a superconductor and a normal metal, um, this is well known. Um, and uh, it, um, it is known that um, uh, superconductivity can, induce, can be induced in a normal metal over typical length scales, which are in the order of, of micrometers. When it comes to proximity effect between a superconductor and a ferromagnet, um, the uh, exchange energy of the ferromagnet enters, as, as Theo just uh, explained already. And as a result, usually then the, ferrum, um, the, the singlet Cooper pairs and the pair amplitude of the singlet Cooper pairs decays on a very, very long, long, uh, short length scale, um, given basically by, uh, by the exchange energy. Um, then it has been proposed that there are other possibilities to uh, fulfill power principles and that might in some combinations also end up in a long uh, range um, proximity effect in to, to ferromagnets. And I've taken here a table from Matthias Eschrick's uh, paper um, where they show the different combinations of spin symmetry, frequency symmetry and the momentum symmetry. So, um, and uh, th there's one combination that we are interested in here. And this is the one that, I, um, that I've marked here with these blue boxes. Um, so we want to have um, um, triplet spins um, and with even spins. So either both pairs, of this, um, both electrons in a Cooper pair pointing with a spin up or both down um, because they can be long ranged in the ferromagnet. And this can be achieved by a combination of an even spatial symmetry, um, either S wave or D wave, um, um, and a, an a odd um, frequency symmetry. Since basically all existing superconductors, elementary superconductors are S wave, so it's that combination that, uh, that we are after. Um, and um, so this is again a cartoon from, from uh, Matthias Eschwick's um, uh, paper um, um, showing these different uh, possibilities and combinations. Um, and what we really want is this uh, blue um, contribution. So triplet superconducting uh, Cooper pairs with spin, both spin pointing upwards. Um, and uh, they are created um, by the interface. 
And this creation uh, works in, in two steps or two requirements uh, need to be fulfilled. First of all, out of this S wave, this conventional S wave superconductor that we have here, where they are basically only singlet pairs, these green ones, one first of all, all has to create um, um, triplet correlations. And um, they are usually then not long ranged and not, not even uh, um, spin direction, but mixed spin direction. And then one has to rotate this triplet, but still um, mixed spin, so short ranged Cooper pairs into these um, possibly long range um, um, even spin contributions. And um, so the, the two, let's say, um, effects that then um, um, can create um, such long range triplets uh, first of all, um, one needs to have a spin mixing that is able to uh, to mix uh, between the spin up and spin down at the both sides of the interface. Um, um, and then um, to really make this rotation from these um, triplet, but still short range triplets, the red ones here, um, into long ranged. And this can be done by a non-homogeneous magnetization. Um, so one, one has a, um, an interface magnetization that is not collinear with the, the bulk um, magnetization that follows in the ferromagnet. This is the, the spirit um, well, that we follow here. Um, this is not, not, not absolutely new. The first predictions came from two, 2001 from uh, um, Sebastian Bergeret's group and co-workers. And I've listed here just a short uh, selection of uh, theoretical papers. Uh, you see they stop in the year of 2011 and also after uh, that a lot, uh, several, well, a lot of uh, theoretical work has been done to really understand in detail. Um, and um, well, I'm sorry for, for not, not being complete here. Um, and um, this um, long range proximity effect in uh, ferromagnets has also been experimentally observed. First publication here um, is this one here um, from 2006. And also then it has been confirmed and realized in many, many other um, 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 realizations. And the way how it is done is usually by measuring directly the Josephson effect, really measuring the supercurrent um, across a ferromagnetic barrier between two um, 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 uh, superconductors, two S-wave uh, superconductors. Um, so there's no doubt that this exists. Still, it is not so clear whether the mechanism is really the one that, that we think of, that is really these triplet pairs. And this is why also other experimental uh, work um, has been then been done. Um, and I'm highlighting here just um, two examples. One is, um, so this triplet superconductivity should also go along with the changed uh, Meissner effect, in particular a paramagnetic contribution. And there's a nice work from the Cambridge group that I, that I quote here. Um, spectroscopically, um, a lot of work um, has, has been done um, basically um, probing for zero bias anomalies. So in, um, in uh, scanning tunnel microscopy um, um, and, and different realizations, um, these um, zero bias anomalies have been, have been studied. I will show in a minute uh, an example for that. But to do so, I will just uh, highlight here one, um, or let's say a, a very, um, let's say, selection again from the theory selections um, where this idea of how the spin mixing really can occur at the interface um, can be implemented. Um, and here the keyword is spin active interfa interface, um, which uh, yeah, um, basically um, describes um, um, what, um, well, what is needed to, to create these, um, these uh, spin mixing. Um, and uh, the notation that I, I will use then later on is that, um, well, one has a tunnel contact, um, which is um, characterized by a tunnel conductance, GT here. And then one has a term that describes the spin activity of the interface. So the, the way, the, the, the degree to which the spin directions can be mixed, this is a G phi. Um, and usually then this ends up in different transmission probabilities for the two spin directions uh, of the electrons. Um, and, um, and then as a result, one obtains a spin dependent conductance and phase shifts between, um, uh, between these two spin directions. 
And it's basically the ratio between these two quantities, the um, spin activity and the tunnel conductance that then determines the, the shape of the density of state in such a tunnel contact. And I've taken here just one picture from a publication from Wolfgang's um, group, um, where you, you see um, the uh, density of states as a function of this um, spin activity. And what is here also highlighted then in, in colors is the spin up and the spin down um, um, uh, compo uh, components. And what you see is that there is much more than just zero bias anomalies, right? So there might be situations where one really has a peak um, at zero bias, um, but there's a, a much richer um, um, physics on that. Yeah, for completeness, I also mentioned the uh, I show the one slide for this first experimental um, observation of the long range proximity effect. Um, where one sees that one can have a, a Josephson uh, effect um, um, over such a junction composed by two superconductors and a ferromagnetic insulate, a half metal, um, which needs to have some non-collinear mag uh, magnetization components to really see then that the supercurrent survives also um, over long uh, distances. Um, um, here's a, uh, and long means well, hundreds of nanometers here in that case, not just the few nanometers that one would have in a, um, in a well, um, short, short range um, ferromagnetic superconductor. And one example of a uh, zero bias anomalies um, here work from, um, from the Jerusalem group um, um, on a, let's say, probably um, not, not so conventional superconductor, um, YBCO and a magnetic material in LCMO and then probed with an STM chip from the magnetic side. And um, as one observes is that at some situations in some uh, currents, um, there are these zero bias anomalies um, uh, popping up. Um, however, zero bias anomalies can have many, many um, origins. And we were looking for something that goes beyond uh, zero bias anomalies um, to have a, a clearer signature um, of that it's really, uh, let's say, the triplets that uh, um, um, cause these um, um, unusual um, tunnel spectra. And we were inspired by this theoretical work. Later, we will not use that theory, but to give justice to the authors, uh, I mention it nevertheless, because they came up with a really clear um, 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 proposition also what to measure. Um, so what, what they showed here is that when you have a system consisting of a superconductor, a magnetic interface um, um, and a normal metal, and then you probe from the normal side um, so it's not, not the long range effect really that is probed here, but just the creation um, of the um, of these triplets in this magnetic interface. And then you probe it from the normal side. Then one, depending on this ratio, this G phi over GT, one may have really a rich uh, variation of densities of states. Um, without spin mixing, one would observe this usual diffusive um, density of states also described by Uzadel equation, as we heard before, but with increasing ratio between G phi over GT, um, one may either have, um, well, something like a double peak, if you look at this blue curve here, still a small gap um, um, in the center, um, or a zero bias anomaly, which is in this well, light blue curve here. Um, and in particular, also a situation where the density of states vanishes nowhere in the gap. So for this purple and, uh, and light blue, um, there's always a finite density of states uh, throughout the whole gap. So this was um, what our inspiration, as I said. And to put this in reality, um, we, we, well, we, we follow the su suggestion. We take a superconductor aluminum uh, as ferromagnetic interface. We take europium sulfide. The system that has been highlighted already also in, in Yagadi's talk, and, and uh, um, well, um, I do not need to say too much about the system. And then as a normal metal on top, uh, we took silver, and I will say in a minute uh, why, we, uh, why we take that. Um, here's a picture of our STM, which is a, um, a very small one. Um, it's just a dipstick that can be immersed into a helium-3. Uh, cryostat, and it's not optimized for scanning. So this was a disclaimer, it's not really scanning. It's optimized um, 
for having high energy resolution, which we estimated to be in the range of 20 microelectron volt. Um, it goes to relatively low temperature um, and it, we can also apply a magnetic field out of plane or in plane um, without um, uh, a while we have really uh, the feedback switched off and, um, and measure spectroscopy. So it's, it's a very specialized variation of an, of an STM. Yeah, aluminum, the system aluminum, from sulfide and silver. We take aluminum because it has a small spin orbit scattering, as we heard in the previous talk. And it is, to my knowledge, the only uh, metal that really fulfills BCS uh, theory to, 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 uh, uh, to high extent. Um, we take silver um, as a normal metal because, well, it's a dirty STM. We don't have UHV conditions, so we need clean surfaces. We have the choice between gold and silver, basically, and uh, gold um, in terms of um, proximity effect in Uzadel equation is not ideal. Um, so we use that system. We studied this in a, in a previous work and, and, and understand its, its properties and know that it really fulfills perfectly well um, prediction of Uzadel equations. And then europium sulfide as, um, is a ferromagnetic insulator, and it may have really a high spin polarization, uh, reports up to 85%, and a small coercive uh, field um, when one deposits it on, on aluminum. Okay. Um, as I said, we start with this characterization method. And what I show here in the left first is um, an example of this um, um, aluminum silver system um, for two different thicknesses of aluminum. Um, the, the thicker one here is uh, the, the blue curve, um, which shows the usual um, gap of, um, of aluminum. And the black lines are fits to the Uzadel equation. When we make the film um, thinner in aluminum, we know the gap goes up. And so this is why this is a system, the thickness that we will use also now in this um, uh, aluminum europe sulfide um, silver system. We use this um, very thin thickness to have a smooth layer, to have a better growth of the europe sulfide um, on, the, on the substrate. We characterize the spectra and magnetic field. And if we just have the usual aluminum silver system, it, it um, um, behaves as it should do for a, a thin a type one superconductor. And when we have here on the right side, the European sulfide in between, um, we see that we have, first of all, a much larger critical field. And also the way how the gap is suppressed um, by, um, by the magnetic field um, is, uh, is different. Okay, so now at least we, we scan a little bit um, by, um, 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 well, by to, but I will not, not uh, tell too much about this. So what I've shown here in this, in this blue um, area is uh, a composition, a spatial composition of um, the IDV spectra, tunnel spectra that we, that we measured. Um, and the color code is explained here and is explained in the bottom. Um, um, most of the area you see is light blue, and light blue means um, tunnel spectra which look very, very much like, um, like a BCS spectrum, so no particular feature inside the gap, pronounced coherence uh, peaks, probably some deviation from the usual BCS situation, but no particular subgap structures. Then there are areas where the system does not well, show any uh, easy to understand um, situation. This would be these gray things here, but luckily they are not too many, probably contamination somewhere. And then there we have these um, medium blue and dark blue spots where we do see um, the features that were suggested to be interesting for triplet um, uh, contributions. This is either, let's say, a double peak in the gap and a density of state that does not vanish nowhere, um, or a zero bias peak. And also here, the density of states is finite um, throughout um, the, um, um, the gap. So we are concentrating basically on these two types of spectra because we think these are the ones that are, that are hallmarking um, the triplet conductivity. Um, um, just for completeness, um, um, well, what, what we can do is we can then follow um, these um, density of states as a function of magnetic field. 
um, um, the blue one here would be the one measured at zero field. And you see I've chosen here one that um, um, has a zero bias anomaly, a very pronounced zero bias anomaly, which has the same height um, as the coherence peaks, by the way. And when we apply a magnetic field, we see that this can split up. Um, um, this would be this green and red curve. And then when we increase the field, it may merge again. A similar thing has been observed um, for tunnel contacts uh, from the Karlsruhe group um, in, in the system, a similar system as shown by Vitero before. Um, and the, it's, let's say it's color coded here. Um, and this was um, understood as spin split and rev bound state. However, there is a market difference. And this is that here in their case, um, they have really zero density of states inside the gap. And they just have then these, these, uh, these these um, narrow peaks that, which may be split or merge, um, while here the density of states does not vanish nowhere in the gap. So it's really a, a, let's say a, a difference. Now I come to the theory. So um, how can we implement um, um, this um, um, conjecture of how the triplets are formed in our system? Um, so this is um, the circuit uh, theory model that um, Wolfgang's group has developed. Um, and I will briefly comment it. So what we have is we have a superconducting node described here by the gap delta um, and um, the conductivity, the normal conductivity um, um, of the superconductor and also um, the finite size enters by the Thaulus energy, uh, energy of, of the superconductor. And there might also be some spin mixing in the superconductor. Then we have the normal node, which is described by also the Thaulus energy and the normal conductivity. And in between, we have this um, a ferromagnetic insulator where in principle, a lot of parameters uh, enter. One is this tunnel conductivity that I called GT before, I have to apologize. And then the several parameters which describe um, the spin polarization um, and the spin activity, so the spin mixing property. Um, we have like four or five minutes left. Yes, I'm almost done. Um, um, and I hope that now yeah, it goes on. Okay, whoops. Let me go back. Now it's kind of frozen here. Okay. Um, so if you if you then use this model, you can have access to the density of states. So what we measure then in principle in the in uh, in our tunnel spectra. And I've shown here for a certain set of parameters um, the variety of tunnel uh, of densities of states that one can obtain. Um, and uh, please just look here at the black, at the blue, and this light blue curve. Um, and the parameter that I'm changing here from top to bottom is basically the spin mixing angle. Um, for for the parameter combination chosen here, it starts off with a zero bias anomaly for zero um, angle. It goes over a split system with two um, uh, peaks in the gap um, at uh, perpendicular, so uh, pi over two. Um, and it may end up then in a zero bias peak again and a more pronounced zero bias peak as it was for zero angle. The nice thing now of the theory is that, of course, they cannot only calculate the density of states, but they can calculate also all these pair amplitude contributions. So the mixed spin triplet um, and the uh, spin up and the spin down triplets. And um, what you see here is that, um, well, what the, the contributions we are after are these long ranged triplets. So they either spin up or spin down. And what you see here is that they have a pronounced amplitude, not when we have a zero bias anomaly, so not in the situation uh, theta equal pi or theta, theta equal zero, but just in between. Uh, so when, when we have this double peak situation, then we have this, uh, this long range contribution. Now, and I, I will show you just in a, uh, in a, in a minute the, the, the color, um, the, um, let's say, the fitting of the experimental spectra with this model. I've chosen here as a starting point, again, this um, example of a spectrum where we have a zero bias anomaly in zero field. Um, blue is experimental data. Black is the fit uh, to the theory and the parameters are given here. Um, and then we can increase the magnetic field. And you see here in this example, uh, um, the zero bias anomaly splits up into two peaks 
um, at some field it merges again to the zero bias anomaly, and then it well then at some point the um, critical field or let's say the magnetic field is this orbital, con orbital contribution that reduces the superconductivity and then we can go down decreasing field back uh, to zero and end up again in a situation with a zero bias um, um, field. And um, what I've cartooned here in between um, is then the fit results um, regarding the angle between um, the, let's say, the two magnetic comp uh, comp components which are used here. Um, and this is the only parameter that we changed in the fit. So we, we um, um, leave, leave all these um, um, uh, parameters fixed. Um, and then the only parameter that we change is this um, 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 angle between the two magnetic components. Um, and what you see is that, well, we can understand this data by assuming that we start off with an anti-parallel situation between um, the direct interface and the bulk magnetization. The magnetic field then aligns them. Um, and when we reduce um, the field, they remain aligned because there's no reason again to go back into the unmagnetized uh, state. And this is then cartooned also here to the right. Um, at zero field, we have an arbitrary um, orientation um, of the bulk uh, magnetization and of the interface magnetization. And, and then the end is aligned by the magnetic field. Yeah, this was basically what I wanted to show you. Um, we did some controls um, uh, using other models, zero, um, um, uh, just a, a spin, um, um, uh, Zeeman splitting of the model, um, and um, found that, um, well, we can in part also describe it by a zero, by a spin, by Z a Zeeman effect, but, but not to the, to the same quality. And I will show you one last um, transparency here, um, which gives you just a selection of different spectra that um, we can uh, that we can obtain basically with the same system with identical samples or even different spots on the same sample. So these are just sample names. And I've highlighted here in green those spectra which we can describe by the model that I just uh, introduced. Um, in red, those uh, which we cannot at all, um, and in yellow, those where we think that with a slight extension of the model, there might be a, a chance to um, 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 to describe them. So, and I, sh I show you this um, showed this slide, uh, slide before I stop, um, just to say that well, we are happy that. Um, we think that we have now, a, let's say, a good understanding um, how the spectroscopic features of triplets are in, 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 in the system. Um, um, and the important uh, take home message is um, you have a, a strong, long ranged triplet component, not when you have a zero bias anomaly, but uh, when you have this, this double, uh, double peak, so a split. Um, 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 density of states, a split zero bias peak, if, if you wish. And, and if we want to go beyond um, 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 this special shape of, dense, of densities of states, so to describe, all, describe also the more complex structures, then I think we need to refine the model. Yeah, thank you for your attention. This was all I wanted to tell.